tell me about chest pain. What are some pains that may mimic a heart attack but are not a heart attack? All right, well, we always worry about that. In fact, I've woken up in the middle of the night with chest tightness. Even you? And I thought, surely no. <laughs> it's the big one. No, it couldn't be. <laughs> so tightness, heaviness, pressure, squeezing, that's really a typical for heart pain, whether it's angina or angina or even a heart attack. But there are some things that mimic that, like the esophagus. The esophagus can give a tight, squeezing chest discomfort. A very, very severe pain. I've never had any trouble till I swallowed some chicken uh -huh. wrong one time. And wow, did I have chest pain. I knew what it was, but I'm a physician. If somebody didn't know what it was, they would think they have an heart attack. Pretty much the same, but this was intense. Yes. A hard pressure pain. What else can cause pain that mimics heart attack? Well, there are some other serious things. So, for example, a dissection of the aorta. What does that mean? That means a tear of the aorta, and that can act... That now, what can, is the aorta then? The aorta is the big artery that comes off of the heart. So the, the heart's pumping artery. the blood, the main right. artery. And it's one of the, uh, the serious, the two or three serious problems that can happen that can cause chest pain. And that is heart attack, dissection of the aorta, or a tear of the aorta, and probably the third and least common would be a blood clot, a pulmonary embolus. And tell me about that dissection again. Why is it so dangerous? Well, it's dangerous because the person can actually bleed into the chest or into the sac around the heart. And uh, if it's not diagnosed very rapidly, it's, it is a cause of sudden death. A pulmonary emboli, what is that? That's when a person has blood clots, typically in the lower extremities, in the legs or in the pelvis. And if those blood clots break loose, they can go to the lungs. That puts strain on the right side of the heart, and that's a pulmonary embolus. And so that can cause pressure chest pain also? It can. Um, tell me again about a typical heart attack then, because I'm going to uh, not only talk about where it is, but can it radiate? What does that mean? And where's the pain coming from? So a typical heart attack is a, is a tightness, heaviness, pressure, squeezing in the central chest that does not go away. So a heart attack comes and stays. Now angina, the same thing, same pain. Well, it's, it's a similar pain, but it tends to come and only be temporary. So it, it might be brought on by exertion or, or emotion, for example, but then it's relieved by rest. Uh, if you have angina and you're having that same chest pain, how do you know if it's a heart attack or chest pain, or uh, heart attack or angina? Right. So it's hard to distinguish the two. Sometimes people have a pattern of angina where they know that if they exert themselves a certain amount, if they go up two flights of stairs, they can do one flight but not two flights and that sort of thing. Some people have a pattern of angina, but unfortunately other people do not and uh, angina can be unstable. So unstable angina and a heart attack have a lot of similarity. If you have angina, is that serious? Well, people live with angina. Millions of people live with angina and uh, it can be managed. It can be managed like other conditions like arthritis. However, if the angina becomes more frequent, more severe or unpredictable, those are examples of unstable angina. If somebody has unstable angina, that means it's coming not in a regular predicted pattern. Uh, what are you going to have to do for that? You're going to have to do a cath on that patient and find out what's going on? Um, the, the cath really is the gold standard. The, the, the heart catheterization, particularly for an unstable person, is, is the gold standard. And that's where it's a procedure where x-ray dye is injected into the heart arteries to look for areas of blockage.